National Assembly on lockdown as parliamentary workers down tools. Senate reacts to report that it failed to sit for the stipulated 181 days. And later on the program. In the president's own state of Katsina, bandits are appointing imams and heads of communities. I'll speak with the minority leader of the Senate and we will talk about the electoral bill, 2023 politics and other national issues. This is the Hello Chambers. I am Tijesu Adiri. Staff of the National Assembly may drill their threat to halt activities in the parliament if their demands are not met. The protesting workers are also threatening to disrupt plenary when lawmakers resume next week. But the National Assembly Service Commission is also making efforts to prevail on the workers and pacify them to shelf the strike. We're not fighting with the uh, commission. We're not fighting with the leadership of National Assembly, but we are fighting for our rights. Yes. This one, we are doing it for our management. Yes. The next one will be for the leadership, the legislators, the Senate, and the House of Reps. Whosoever is holding our money, the person must bring the money out. Yes. Yes. This is not the time to speak English. The era of speaking English is gone. National Assembly Service Commission is our regulator. They employ us. In the whole of 2021, Nigerian senators held plenary sessions for just 66 days. But according to Section 63 of the 1999 Constitution, as amended, lawmakers of both the Senate and the House of Representatives have to sit for a period of not less than 181 days in a year. We asked the spokesman of the Senate, Senator Ajibola Bashiru, to react to this report. The reason is in the public domain. There's, there's a COVID-19 pandemic, which is a global public health emergency, and uh, which is still I mean, ravaging. So the decision of the Senate is that rather than suspending plenary proceedings, uh, we are to take plenary proceedings on Tuesdays and Wednesday, except where exigencies of work will necessitate that. And it is also very important to say that uh, notwithstanding the challenge of COVID-19 pandemic, 2021 is perhaps the most productive year of the uh, Nigerian National Assembly in terms of uh, the impactful legislations and uh, of course breaking, I mean, the deadlock as to some le legislations that will impact positively on the life of Nigerians. So I would say that uh, rather than focus on issue of global emergency, which necessitated being cautious in terms of uh, approach to our work at true plenary sitting, focus should really be about how impactful our work in 2021 had been. The imp impact of legislative work is not counted in terms of numerical numbers or bills that have been passed, but in terms of the impact that those legislations and the importance they have generally in the life of Nigerian people are a most impactful legislation concluded upon in year 2021 is the Petroleum Industry Act, which had had a rather checkered history in terms of its uh, consideration and passage in Nigeria. And the uh, work was also concluded on the Electoral Act, which had been left unamended since 2011. Of course, uh, the Ninth Senate had also worked on the banks and other financial institution acts, as well as some other I mean, legislation that have impact on the life of I mean, the uh, country, both economically and in terms of advancement of development of our people. 
Joining me to talk on other issues as it concerns legislative activities is the minority leader of the Senate, Senator A. Naya Baribe, representing Abia South Senatorial District in the National Assembly. It's good to have you on the program. We begin with the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. Many Nigerians thought this time we would have... Uh, I, I would say that I didn't also understand it. Um, the uh, refusal of the president to assent to the bill. Um, let, 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 me, let me put it in context. President Buhari himself in coming to office in 2019, his party also did direct primaries. And he is a beneficiary of direct primaries. So when he now comes around and says, oh, I, uh, it's, uh, this, there were wide consultations. And the preponderance of opinion from that consultation was actually that people felt that they were bringing democracy to the people. And uh, I know also that there was also some consultation in the uh, presidential villa uh, by the APC Aparachik, uh, the vice president and uh, the senior president and the um, speaker. And, and there was so, some kind of decision by them when they all felt that this was the right way to go. But then, um, we're going to reopen next week. When we reopen, we're going to consider the president's um, letter. And we're going to come up with an, an opinion on the matter. And uh, I will not preempt what is going to happen. But let me say that what we want to do is to ensure that Nigerians have the best type of um, electoral system possible so that votes count, so that the, in the process, the person who becomes elected understands that he is beholden to the electorate and not beholden to whatever cabal that brings him or her into office. And that is... I think the ultimate aim of democracy, which is, I think, a rule by the people for the people. That's so. I, I, I think that we're going to go um, and do what we think is best for the Nigerian people. Senators were already compiling signatures to override Mr. President's veto on this matter, but this agenda seems to have gone with the wind. No, I, I do not think there was anything like compiling. What, what we were doing was sampling opinions of senators to say, where do you stand on this matter? And I think that nobody, no senator has changed their mind since then. And of course, the uh, period of the uh, Christmas holidays has also afforded every legislator a chance to interact with their people back at home have sat with my own constituents have talked with the leaders, I've talked with the people, I've uh, interacted with them, and I know what their uh, feelings are with regard to this. And of course, when we come to the floor to discuss it, I will make the opinion of the people of Abia South uh, very, very clear. No, I, I, when, when it comes, I will let you know. I will not preempt uh, what will come uh, on the floor of the Senate. Do you think the rejection of the Electoral Act is in bad faith, considering the fact that the National Assembly approves all requests made by Mr. President, but he failed to reciprocate the same gesture with the Electoral Act Amendment Bill? Well, I think that we have different um, views. We have different, I uh, we say, responsibilities within the Constitution. Our own responsibility is to act as oversight to the um, executive. The, the responsibility of the executive is to implement the laws that we make for them. And uh, I, I think it's also not so charitable 
to now look at it as a tit for tat thing. Okay, we have done for you, you have not done for us. That's not how um, we should look at uh, governance. Governance is supposed to be much more, um, I would say, much more serious than, you know, uh, reducing it to such a pedestrian level. It is not that. It's not whether we have approved what they have done and we expect that what we do, they do. No. The point is simple. This is what we think Nigerians want. This is what the executive think is in the best interest of the country. And so we're going to come together and look at it. You've always advocated that in 2023, the seat of the presidency should be zoned to the southeast. How do you feel now that Ashiwa Jubola Ahmed Tinubu has thrown his hat in the ring? Do you still think the southeast stands a chance? What, what I have always said is that anybody that is competent should actually come and throw his hat in the ring. I have not said it is to the exclusion of anybody. All I have said is that all parts of Nigeria, assuming we are looking at it that way, that the South is one of the zones of the country that has not had a chance to produce a president and therefore should be given that chance. But that does not mean that the South East will not go and interact with others and make sure that you convince them and make sure that we bring out our best. I do not advocate that we throw away competence and capacity. What I have only said, and which I continue to reiterate, is that the APC sold Nigeria short because they told us that they were going to bring that candidate that is going to change Nigeria. And their mantra was change. We didn't know that the change APC was going to bring to us was to increase the level of insecurity to such an abysmal level from three states in the Northeast to all over the country. To the extent, like my friend Sheh Usani said the other day, that in the president's own state of Katsina, bandits are appointing imams and heads of communities in the president's own state. In other words, insecurity has metastasized like cancer under the APC government, and that was not what they promised us. And at the same time, we also have seen a deterioration moving us from where we were as the biggest economy in Africa and the world's leading uh, investment um, heaven to a place where everybody is running away from us now and becoming the largest poverty capital of the world, even worse than India, that has far larger population than us. So the point really is this. Can we continue along that path, or do we go away from that? And I made it obvious in an interview I did the other day back at home and said, this present darkness, to quote uh, a German uh, 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 writer, uh, I, I feel to forget, uh, remember his name, about Nigeria. This present darkness brought to us by APC, that we either shift away from it or we will continue to wallow in it and we don't know the extent and where it's going to lead us. Are you saying the PDP has that preferred candidate that will take Nigeria out of the darkness you speak of? We're saying that PDP moved Nigeria to the point where APC now came and took us all the way backward. And you know, one of the uh, funny things that we hear from the APC is that every time they will say, ah, PDP did us so bad, that is what we came to. But they are the first to continue to woo PDP uh, elements to come and join 
APC. So why are you scrambling for the same people that you have said were the people who led us into the problems that you have today? And so a, a PDP person wants to uh, uh, join APC, they take him to the villa. And the same president that talks against PDP is the person that welcomes him. So you want to wonder, if you were so good, if you were such a saint, why are you welcoming sinners? This is one of the biggest, I will say, wonders of this world. Now we have even gotten to the point where there's a speculation, where we're being told that, um, oh, APC, or uh, elements in APC are going around trying to woo President Jonathan of the PDP to come and be their candidate. And when uh, somebody asked me and said, uh, what do you think about that? I said, hallelujah. Now that those who called us clueless have turned around to want to make us their savior, what it tells us is that those people were never real. They were fake. They were propagandists. All they wanted was power. They got power. They didn't know what to do with it. They have led us into the abyss. Nigerians are getting worried about the country's rising debt profile. Are the reasons that President Buhari is giving justified, considering the fact that it may take another 30 years for the country to have set this loan? We, we, we had said something, and um, we said it on the floor of the Senate when we had a discussion on the matter of loans. And we said, if you're in a hole, to get out of it. You stop digging. But we have an APC the government that's in a hole, and rather than try to stop digging and coming out of that hole, continues to dig further and further. What you do is very simple. You sit down, you look at your circumstance, you decide how you're going to... Um, you First of all, you look at yourself. Then you say, how do we cut costs? After you have said you have done how to cut costs, how to cut all the leakages and all that, then you now say, these are the priority areas. These are the things that we need to do. How do we? But what we just saw was that, tell me how in 2015 that this government came into office you will still have to move Nigeria to have 40-something ministries. That means that I've been issue. You were totally clueless about where we are. Yet, you were the person that claimed that, oh, it was a very bad economy, was bad, this and that, you are coming to fix it. Yet, you expanded bureaucracy. You now started borrowing like a drunken sailor. How do you expect that you're going to come out of it? So, essential things first. When PDP came in 1999, Nigeria was also in trouble. $23 a barrel and all that. And PDP quietly resolved most of our issues. And that's why we think that in the same way that we were able to bring Nigeria out of the morass that it was, grow us into the economy that we had before APC came to throw us down. And one of the biggest problems I would say Nigerians ought to confront is why is it that any APC person, after six years to seven years of an APC government, when they want to talk, they will say, ah, PDP, after this many years, you came to say that you are uh, coming to uh, effect a change? High costs of governance and hands have been pointing to the National Assembly for running a unilateral type of legislature instead of a bilateral? My own feeling is very simple, and I've said it severally. Sure. What is the percentage of the National Assembly's budget to the national budget? National Assembly's budget, barely 2% of the national budget. And then somebody says, oh, it is the National Assembly. So, fine, if we wipe away the National Assembly, what we get is simply 2% out. What about the 98%? Where do you leave that? 
So I, I want people who want to make arguments, really, to do analytical argument based on facts, not based on, look, how, how, can, how can an economy that is dying wake up and tell us, oh, every month we spend 50 something billion giving money to Nigerians that nobody can track. How can anybody say that? And we just sit around and then somebody now makes the argument, oh, it is the National Assembly if you make, if you break it into two. No, wipe away the whole National Assembly. What about the other 98 percent? How will it solve your problem? Our people, do you both say that now? Achoanyano, Aganishia. If we are looking for the eye of an animal, we go to the head because that is where the eye is. If we're looking for our problems, we go to where it is. Our problems are right there. Why do we have all this myriad of ministries? Why do we have all this myriad of um, agencies? Why do we have all this spending without any control? Why do we continue to borrow without check? Okay, tell me. We have you as TVC. You set up on your own. You're a private individual. You're running your... Um, uh, your network it covers the whole of Nigeria everybody sees it then somebody tells me today that we have to borrow 500 and something million dollars to give to NTA to improve them so does that not amount to a massive waste and when we pointed it out and this same government we come to justify such I will say, uh, let me not use words that are, just, let me just say, such foolishness. We know the Ninth National Assembly has resolved to maintain a cordial working relationship with the executive arm, which may be slightly different from what was obtained in past assemblies. But do you think this smooth relationship may be preventing the National Assembly from putting its foot down when it ought to? I don't think it, it, it prevents us from putting our foot down. And I don't think that trying to say, let us maintain a cordial relationship in the interest of the country is necessarily um, a bad thing. It's not. The only thing is this. Because we're different arms of government, necessarily, there has to be a... I would say, difference of opinion um, in views in how we look at issues. The real problem we have is that modern democracy always, and I've said it here before, conflicts with what I termed KBAC syndrome of our politics in the i will say yoruba mythology the kbc word is final so when he makes a pronouncement that is it so it is that mentality that conflicts with the modern democratic mentality that we ought to have and so there is this i will say social conflict or cultural conflict in our polity that some people say oh he's a president he's uh, old he's a uh, baba and whatever he says we we cannot uh, question it so when somebody like me steeped in a democratic tradition from my grassroots because we as he was are totally are democratic and I said, no, 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 I don't agree with this. Then some people who do not understand that the democratic ethos is that you must question what comes. Ah, you're being insolent, you're uh, challenging authority, you know, all that type of thing. That is where I think lies this particular problem. And until we resolve it, 
we will always continue to have this problem until we resolve it. Since this is the last legislative year for the 9th Assembly, what more should Nigerians expect? Well, what we intend is that those critical areas that we said that we ought to finish, that we will go ahead and complete it. One, the Electoral Act, we must deal with it. The other piece of legislation that is left, we must also complete it. But every, uh, every government, <clears throat> it's an ongoing thing. So whatever we do, we're not going to finish everything. Whatever government is going to come, it will also continue from where this government has stopped. The important thing, which is what I continue to tell all our people, even from my home state in Abia, is that at all times, try and live anywhere you find yourself. Anywhere you find yourself, try and leave it better than you found it. Unfortunately, APC has left Nigeria worse than it found it, not better. And we are now going to come as PDP to make Nigeria better than we will find it when the APC government leaves office. That's all on the program this week. You can watch it again on TVC News' YouTube channel. Do not forget to like, subscribe, and share. Also follow me on Twitter and all other social media handles to get fresh news and updates from the National Assembly. Thank you for watching. I am Tijesu Adiri.